Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, different temperature classes of actual fans. Let me just uh, let me just draw a simple fan here. Oops. There's a typical tube actual fan. Here we have our propeller. Just going to draw it very simple. And basically, you have several uh, classes. First of all, you have the standard temperature class, standard temperatures. And those fans typically, typically operate in regions um, below, below uh, 55 degrees Celsius. And these are uh, basically you know, room, normal room temperature or outdoors. And uh, actually also the cheapest of actual fans. Then you have another class of, of, of uh, actual fans which are called smoke extraction fans. And those fans are a bit special. If you have a fire, those fans have to operate for a certain time uh, extracting that smoke caused by the fire before they fail and those fans are specified by the temperature and the time so basically for instance you have some fans called f300 slash 2h that means such a fan could withstand 300 degrees celsius for two hours another type would be f400 let's say 1h that means that means such a fan could withstand 400 degrees Celsius for one hour. And basically, uh, construction-wise, all of these fans are equal except the motor. The motor is basically the one thing that will fail at those high temperatures. Because the, the other bits of the fan, they can withstand the heat, no problem. Except that at, uh, at higher than 400, you'd have uh, like aluminum and stuff like that would, would start getting really soft and soggy. But at 300 and at, at 250 degrees, basically the motor is the biggest, uh, your biggest problem. And that's why uh, th th those smoke extraction fans are limited to a certain time and they're certified that way. Uh, in Europe and uh, in the States or in North America, um, those smoke extraction fans are, are, are certified and if, if you as a manufacturer, you as a manufacturer go to some uh, body like a university or, or a test lab and have your fans tested and if they fail, you do not get that certification which allows you to sell smoke extraction fans. If however, you, you, you succeed in that test and your fan withstands let's say like 300 degrees Celsius for at least two hours, you get that certificate and that means you can sell smoke extraction fans. Smoke extraction fans are, are very important, especially in buildings and tunnels where there's risk of fire. And you've got two types. One type is continuously uh, working. So that means those fans are working all the time, fire or no fire. If there's no fire, they're just working like a normal standard temperature fan. And when there is a fire, they extract that smoke for a specified time. And the other type of smoke extraction fans are, they just work when there's a fire. So they're basically sitting there doing nothing all the time. And, and when there's a fire, some sensor turns on these fans and they extract that smoke. Okay, so these are basically the classes of, of, uh, of smoke extraction. Then you have some, then you have some uh, fans which can take up to 600 degrees for a certain time. Now these fans, these fans uh, are a bit special and basically, let me just roll down. With F600 you have some fans which can withstand 600 degrees but these fans are a bit different. Here no motor can withstand 600 degrees so what they what they do is they have that motor but that motor is isolated from the airstream 
Okay, here's the here's the propeller, here's the shaft to the motor, and that motor's outside of the airstream. So there's the airstream going through the fan. That's that airstream is 600 degrees, but inside that motor cabin, you would only have let's say like 300 degrees. So basically, with those F600 fans, what you have is um, a motor capable of lower temperatures, but through its insulation, it is capable of, of withstanding those higher temperatures again for two hours and so. Okay, and then another type of fan, what you have are those fans which continuously operate at, at high temperatures, and those are not uh, specified by that F number, but basically they're the same design here. They isolate the motor from the airstream, and thus the motor can withstand those temperatures for a much longer time. Because should if the motor is in the hot airstream, it will not last for long.